Hey everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I want to talk about the hydrohalogenation of alkynes, or in other words, how alkynes react with hydrogen halides. In this video, we'll go over the intricacies of the reaction itself and its mechanism, the typical examples you are likely encounter in your tests, and of course, we'll go over the common mistakes students make so you can avoid those as well. So grab your cup of coffee, a notebook to work through the examples with me, hit that like button for good luck on the test, and let's get started. So here is how the mechanism of the hydrohalogenation is described in pretty much every textbook out there. We start with an alkyne and hydrogen halide, propyne and hydrogen bromide in this case. The first step here will be electrophilic attack from the hydrogen halide on the alkyne, and similarly to the hydrohalogenation of alkenes, this reaction can potentially give you two different carbocations. In this particular case, we can make a primary carbocation like this, and a secondary carbocation like that one. Based on everything that we know about the carbocations, we can predict that the secondary carbocation will be the one that we form in this reaction, and the other one is not going to be our choice. And after that, we are going to perform a nucleophilic attack on the carbon, giving us the first possible product in this reaction. And depending on how we do this reaction, we can either stop here or continue with another round of addition with the next equivalent of our hydrogen halide. If we continue with this reaction and perform the next electrophilic attack, just like in the previous case, we are going to end up with two possibilities for our carbocation. A primary carbocation that looks like this, and a secondary carbocation like this one. Naturally, we would want to go with the secondary carbocation here. Not to mention that this carbocation is stabilized by the resonance with the bromine atom, and while this resonance might not be particularly strong due to the poor orbital overlap uh, between carbon and bromine, it is nonetheless there. So the next nucleophilic attack by the bromine anion will give us the final product, notably both cases, the formation of my halfway product and my final product give me so-called Markovnikov product, where we have a halide that ends up on the more substituted carbon and the hydrogen atom on the less substituted carbon. Pretty easy, right? Well, let's look at this example over here. In this case, I'm reacting 3-methylbut1-ion with HBr, so the first step here would be exactly what we would expect, an electrophilic attack from the HBr on our pi bond. This gives us two possible carbocation intermediates, the primary one and the secondary one like this. And since in this case uh, my secondary carbocation is still sp hybridized, I'm showing it with the linear geometry and the bond angle over here of about 180 degrees. And naturally, the primary carbocation is a no-go, so we'll continue with the secondary one here. Next, we're going to do the nucleophilic attack by the bromide anion, giving us the halfway product 2-bromo-3-methylbut-1-ene. And you're probably wondering here, why I didn't do a carbocation rearrangement? After all, we know that if a carbocation can rearrange to give us a more stable carbocation, it's bound to happen. And like in this case, we should end up with a way more stable tertiary allele carbocation, and yet that does not happen. And you might also be wondering why, despite everything you've learned in your course, this is all of a sudden an exception. And we know that in chemistry there are no such things as exceptions. Everything has a reason. And trust me, there is a reason here. And the reason being the fact that the mechanism that we teach you is a total, um, well, you got it. What I mean to say is that the actual experimental data does not support the mechanism we teach to our sophomore organic chemistry students. There. So the current kinetic studies of this reaction suggest that the reaction has a concerted thermolecular mechanism. In this case, the molecule of an alkyne interacts with two different molecules of HBr simultaneously, giving you the product right away bypassing the formation of the carbocation. And since we have no carbocation intermediate, we have no carbocation rearrangements. To my knowledge, I haven't seen any reasonable explanation of why this carbocation, if it actually 
forms at all, uh, doesn't undergo the rearrangement. If you happen to know the study looking into this proving that there is an actual carbocation and it doesn't rearrange because of the reasons that are not, um, I don't know, pure magic, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to check it out and be proven wrong. Now, the second step on this reaction is just a normal hydrohalogenation with no tricks to it. We don't see any carbocation rearrangements here simply because our intermediate is stabilized by the resonance from the bromine's electron spares, so nothing unexpected here. So on the exam, no matter how much you might be tempted to do the rearrangement in this case, they are usually not observed, so don't do any rearrangement here. Just put your hydrogen on the less substituted carbon and your bromine on the more substituted carbon for the first step and then for the second step as well. There is also another experimental evidence that supports the termolecular mechanism for this reaction. So let's look at this reaction between the but 2 ion and HBr. The halfway product in this case is nearly exclusively a product of the anti-addition. If a carbocation would be involved in this reaction, then we would see an appreciable amount of the other product as well, since the reaction, you know, involving carbocations, they are not stereospecific. Yet, we are not seeing this here at all. Now, since there are two mechanisms for this reaction, one that we teach to students which doesn't have much support in the form of the experimental evidence, and the other one, which is more realistic, make sure you know which one your instructor expects from you on the test. The thing is, there are only a couple of textbooks out there that talk about the thermolecular nature of the first step, and if you are not using one of those textbooks in your class, you'll be learning the mechanism with the carbocation. So I always advise that in the cases like this, check with your instructor, since it's your instructor and not me who is going to be giving you your final grade. And with that, I want to thank you for watching this video. Hit the like button if you learned something new today, leave me your feedback and questions in the comments below, watch this video next, and I'll see you tomorrow!